Uh, dear Dave Makari, uh, this is Rowan, and I really wanted to do this live, but for some reason, something's like I keep getting a little error message from the uh, the um, the phone app saying uh, error error occurred creating broadcast. So that's why I'm doing this this way. So hi, Kitty. What's Murnau want? Murnau wants everybody's attention. But, that they are... Ah, oh, who am I kidding? Half of you are tuning in for the Murnau show. So, as I began several times before, actually I didn't, but I did promise a bit of a shout-out to some of my favorite uh, YouTubers who have fewer than a thousand subscribers. So, I will do that while I'm procrastinating because I have a deadline, like a serious deadline. I'm gonna have two songs, one which has already been recorded, on a compilation. So, yeah, I, I work best under deadlines, but at the same time, <laughs> I, I also <laughs> have these tendencies to procrastinate until it cannot be avoided. So, yeah, there's that. But I said I was going to do this, so this is something to check off of my list of shit to do this weekend. So, there's a couple on here who actually have a little over a um, thousand subscribers, because the first time I made this list was, oh god, uh, I want to say the first time I made this list was sometime before my birthday. And it was this many pages long. And so, obviously, I had to pare it down. And the reason I pared it down is because I don't want this video to be several hours long. So I was going to group this, like, first we've got musicians, then we've got pagan tubers, then we've got goth tubers, then I had a, I thought I was going to have more in LGBT slash political, and um, when you pare it down to only fewer than a thousand, I actually have, like, all of one on that list. Booktube and Crafttube, again, it's one of those situations where I thought I'd have, like, more than two of each, but then I decided, then I was just like, uh, I really don't, so consolidate. It's close enough. Um, nerds do crafts, nerds read books. As one who does both, I can say this with authority. Uh, then I just, like, have vintage I am very loose with the definition of vintage tubers. And then I have miscellaneous, which is people I can't really... It's hard for me to say, like, who would enjoy their videos. So, um, anybody else from here that I wanted to add? So, like, the first time I did this, I just, like, put everybody on the list. Under musicians, uh, let's see. So we've got, de uh, with under a hundred... And I don't know how because um, Lygia resurrected Adrienne. She has she has plugged them a lot, and she has many times the subscribers I do. So number one, Dead Roses um, music. Obviously, I would put them. I don't know. It would. I would say gothic rock, just broadly. I'm an old person, like so. You know, like, Bolshoi is gothic rock to me, and people younger than myself would just be all like, up, all up in my shit on right, and be like, No, that's post-punk! I'm like... So, uh, uh, then, um, now there's a couple people on here who I am, uh, just, I'm, I'm trying to guess their subscriber count based on views, and this would be one of them. And I do believe that, like, at one time, I think, I think she had her uh, number of subscribers uh, public, but she's since changed that. But uh, Lena Blackrose, um, let's see, my first estimate was, like, she had maybe under 500, just based on views that come by. She is an excellent musician. She, uh, she does uh, voice and piano covers of a few things. There's a couple other songs that she's done that aren't even restricted to just voice and piano. Um, without synthesizers a couple times. Um, she does really excellent 
beautiful mood music, I would say, is like, uh, but at the same time, it's very gothic. It's like, you know, like that wistful, gothic y mood music kind of thing. Like, think Rasputina, um, except with piano instead of cello. But that's great. Then, uh, with under a hundred subscribers, which really confuses me because her music is excellent. Her YouTube is under her day to day name, but artist name is The Bedroom Witch. YouTube channel would be Sefer Mashiachov. I don't know. It's it's Iranian, I believe. Um, S e p e h r m a s h i a h o f. You know what? Just like search the Bedroom Witch, and when you see an S, Mashiachov name, that is her. Uh, I get really excited every time The Bedroom Witch uh, puts out another single or EP or whatever, and she's one of those few musicians lately who will I'm all about, like, take mom filthy money. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, like, if, if you appreciate my opinion on anything, please just go check out her music. It is beautiful and wonderful. With uh, under a thousand subscribers, and I know she's still in that range, I just didn't add her to this list for some reason. Who's another one of those musicians who will just, like, who, who can gladly take my money anytime, any place, anywhere. Uh, we've got Oles, O-L-S. I get really excited about her music every time something comes out. I'm usually the first person, or at least until computer issues. I'm usually the first person on my station to play anything that she puts out, like, instantly. Uh, call her music, like, dark, pagan, gothic, folk. It's... And one thing that I find really wonderful about her music is a lot of musicians based in various European countries will perform in English because that's, like, a selling point for a lot of uh, people, especially in the States. Especially in the States. But... She performs near exclusively, like her lyrics are near exclusively in Polish. I, I, ugh, and I'm making myself look like an idiot now because I almost want to say that there's one in English or I might have just been listening to it long enough that I've got the translation. Because she puts translations on her Bandcamp page. She just plays wonderful, wonderful music. Neon Zigane, uh, I... I know they say Zagan. I'm used to how I say it from uh, Storm Constantine. Uh, another um, musician tube. And they've been called experimental a lot of times. I hear gothic rock, okay? That's what I hear. So, experimental gothic rock. There, best of both. Anybody else I left out from this side? No. Uh, well, Jungle Records. Jungle Records, I, th I think they are still hovering at under a thousand, or maybe just past it very recently. Uh, classic goth and punk label, and an honorable mention because between the first list and this list, Christine Plays Viola uh, gained a couple hundred more subscribers. They're now at, I just put down, under 1,200. So that is at the time I made this list, and I started this list about a week ago, so... I don't know, maybe they've surpassed that at this point. So, now we move on to Pagan Tube. Uh, first on this list, she kind of exploded between the current list and the previous list. Um, I want to say the previous list, where did it go? It, I just had it. Oh, my wonderful, wonderful um, things here. No, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was thinking of somebody else. So, first list under 600, current list still under 600. Uh, that would be Miss Magic Girl TV. This is all one word. M-I-S-S-M-A-G-I-C, no pretentious K, G-I-R-L TV. Uh, she is delightful. <laughs> uh, I first found her as a uh, pr uh, presenter on the Pagan Perspective channel, they have at least a few thousand subscribers, but if you don't, uh, if you aren't one of them, please just go add them if this would be relevant to your interests. As for her personal channel, varied subjects, uh, usually around paganism, witchcraft, and magic. Uh, she also does flea market 
um, haul videos, uh, cause she's based in Sweden, so, um, my guess is, like, rather than a lot of, like, explicitly thrift shops, I don't know, but, or maybe there's just, like, far more flea markets where she's at. I'm not sure about the cultural differences there, but, um, but yeah, she does a lot of things from flea markets and antique shops sometimes, and one thing that you really gotta, um, that, that I really love about her videos is, so she's got this collection of creepy dolls that she will involve in various stop-motion animations, and she'll also do, like, some paper cutout stop-motion at times, and it all has this very, um, you know, creepy, uh, sort of, um, you know, vintage creepy antique sort of vibe to it, like, you know, like, like, think Rasputina, think if you have to, Dresden Dolls. Uh, <laughs> I will say, though, at least Amanda Palmer doesn't say as much cringe as Morrissey does, and as a reluctant fan of both, I'm, I I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> If, if there's nobody else from this list that you gotta check out, I don't know, I think if you really appreciate, um, a lot of what I, especially with my whole junk shop bohemian aesthetic here in the spooky house, uh, she's, she's just wonderful. She's just wonderful. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Mads the Ghost, even though I'm pretty sure the video that she did that first caught my attention was kind of a passive-aggressive jab at me, but I checked out her videos, and she's also delightful. I'm pretty sure her accent is from Minnesota. It's very thickly Midwestern in that kind of, you know, like that, that Fargo kind of, as in the film, not... North Dakota. I, I've heard people from the Dakotas. They sound... Actually, no. Mm, mm, I take that back. Uh, but it's not as heavy as it is from Minnesota or Wisconsin. Um, okay. By both lists, she's at under 300, which is fine. We've all been there. At least those of us who make videos. Um, yeah. Goth and pagan witch chat kind of videos. Paranormal stories. Uh, that's why I put her under Pagan rather than under Goth. Also because the Goth list was kind of overflowing at a point, so I had to, like, move a couple people around. Let's see, then October Rain Rocks. This is all done in one word. October, spelled like it sounds if you speak English anyway. Rain, R-A-I-N, not R-E-I-G-N. Um, rocks, as in rock music, or rocks. Like that are no over there on the table. She does a lot of uh, Morgan, um, as in the um, um, Gaelic goddess. Uh, she does a lot of videos uh, discussing the Morgan um, and various uh, witchy practices, and she does little altar tours of her own. Uh, some broadly gothic topics. Again, somebody I initially discovered through the comments in another goth tubers videos and so i discovered hers and uh, she does a lot more uh witchcraft kind of stuff uh she'll also do like a few occasional life updates as a mom so october rain rocks currently under 700 subscribers now this next one i'm really surprised that she's still at under 500 subscribers because it is uh morgan daimler d-a-i-m-l-e-r i believe that's how it's pronounced if not, I, I will be corrected eventually. Um, she's a pagan author of Fairycraft and a couple other books she's done about um, the fairy uh, path as she practices. And she has done so much research into, like, especially Celtic fairy lore and... Uh, as far as I'm concerned, she's, like, as far as published authors go, she is, like, one of the top authorities, if not the top authority, especially, like, for an American writer to go to on your fairy topics. So, currently under a thousand subscribers, Morgan Daimler, like I said, uh, very low lore info pagan fairy path author. Um, and an honorable mention to somebody who very recently broke a thousand subscribers is uh, Tangerine Layla, and I think, uh, yeah, Tangerine Layla star or asterisk 
the sleepy oracle. She is so entertaining. And I know she just broke a thousand, uh, but, you know, like, like uh, Christine Plays Viola did, you know, when I first put them on here. She'll do varied uh, topics. Uh, she does a lot of uh, live um, oracle card readings um, when she live streams. And yeah, she just broke a thousand. That's because she streams from um, webcam, so. <laughs> uh, but one of my favorite uh, vi kinds of videos that she does is as her alter ego, uh, Roman Biscotti, who just does these quirky little songs with a Casio, like, wonderful wig and sunglasses, and it, it, this is just seriously some of the most entertaining videos on YouTube, and if only for those, you need to subscribe. And like I said, I put her under Pagan because she does a lot of card readings and Oracle stuff and Oracle card unboxings and all of that. But the Roman Biscotti songs, this is just the most wonderful thing in the world. So yes, Tangerine Layla, um, I have here under 1,100 subscribers, but like I said, honorable mention, much like with Christine Plays Viola. So, now we move on to the Goth Tube uh, channels that you should check out. Um, Christine the Arctic Spider, A-R-C-T-I-C, -C, Arctic. Um, so, she does a lot of talk about music. And was there anything else I left on here? She's currently under 100 subscribers, which I don't know why. She's so sweet, and she's so very visibly enthusiastic about the music she talks about. Uh, go check out some of her uh, music tag videos. I know she's friendly with uh, Orphea and uh, Amy Necrotique, so, um, and I enjoy both of them as well, so just go check her out. I believe she's from... Uh, I, I get I get the, the impression that there's kind of like a, a, a friendly sort of family-esque bickering between the Scandinavian countries, just from reading the uh, Scandinavia and the World comic, uh, web comic. Um, uh, I can't remember if she's Norwegian or Finnish, but I know she's not Swedish. <laughs> It says, uh, Arctic Spider, so my guess is maybe Norway, um, just because they've, uh, got, uh, some, they've got at least one major city above the Arctic Circle, which I believe is Lillehammer. Uh, so yeah, just go check her out. She's so sweet, and she's so enthusiastic and eager to talk about the music that she does, and it's wonderful. Uh, with, uh... Under 100 subscribers, we've got Latin X Gothic X G O T I C. Uh, they um, and they prefer they. Uh, they do a lot of videos uh, discussing music, and they have an ongoing series of uh, discussing and giving shoutouts to uh, to bands from various Latin American countries, including like Costa Rica and Chile and Guatemala, I believe have been listed. Obviously Mexico, there's like so many gothic death rock bands from Mexico. It's huge there. <laughs> um, but yeah, you gotta go check out their videos. You will learn so much about music south of the equator. It's it's wonderful. Then with, uh, let's see, on the first list, I had them listed as under 400, and I don't know why it took me so long to get them onto this list. They also prefer they, uh, is Jess In King, J-E-S-S-I-N-K-I-N-G. They are a goth tuber. They are also into Lolita fashion. Uh, they talk a lot about music, which is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, and they also have a lot of videos about being African American in the goth scene, and they do some, uh, some brand shout outs to African American owned and otherwise black owned brands, uh, that they use for, like, hair care and everything. And I know I'm summing it up, and it probably sounds you know, just like vague and brushing over, but I've still got half a list to go, so. Um, they have a really unique perspective on things. I, I know some people are probably gonna wanna nitpick this, but they, uh, one of my favorite series that they do is um, highlighting unsung black uh, 
goth musicians, and uh, obviously they used goth very broadly, uh, where a lot of people would probably say, well, maybe gothic, but, you know, at the same time, I'm like, I can see where their reasoning is. I can see their reasoning in describing these musicians that way, and again, very wonderful. I really enjoy their videos and their perspective on things. Uh, then, let's see, on the new list with under 200 subscribers, uh, Lily Divine Light. Um, L-E-E-L-E-E -E -E -L -E -E Divine Light. And uh, in the original note, that I made. She's just a very sweet, uh, she's a very sweet girl, um, somewhere in England. I'm not quite, uh, I can't quite place the accent, but it's, uh, it, it's, it's pretty thick, but it's wonder, it's, it's delightful. She's very delightful. She does chatty little, uh, she does chatty little, um, vloggy life update kind of things. She does tag videos and all of that. Uh, she'll do, like, very quick, like, first impression reviews, kind of, of uh, various, like, gothic um, clothes and music and all of that. Very sweet, very sweet young lady, um, but please go check her out. Give her some extra love. And I was really torn. Did I want to put uh, next on the list under goth tube or pagan tube because they do equally both but I stayed with goth tube uh, at currently under 800 subscribers and yeah that's been pretty steady uh, we've got uh, Luna Wolfbane L U N A space wolf bane b a n e so wolf like the like the wolf like the animal uh, she does equal amounts of um gothic and witchy kind of chats um she also does a lot of uh life updates so um if that is the kind of thing you might enjoy at least go check her out and like watch some of her uh, witchy videos it's very it's from a very personal perspective which is really great and yeah you see a lot of that in uh in the in the pagan tube circles and pagan circles in general uh, she's got a very interesting personal take on things and again i i find her very delightful and i love her videos so much and uh then uh with uh where did i have this Oh, they've they've shot up a, a good amount since the uh, since the first list is um, Obscura Undead currently under 500 subscribers, and I don't know how that happened. I don't know how they have don't have over a thousand yet. That's what I'm more talking about. Uh, Obscura Undead, they do, and I say they because it's two of them. Uh, two young women, very knowledgeable about their music. They kind of nitpick genre more than I find necessary, but the, uh, the primary focus of the Obscura Undead YouTube is to discuss music and review albums and give um, band tour updates and all of that. So that is wonderful. Uh, they're doing a wonderful service for all of GothTube, if you ask me. They have a companion blog that goes along with this. And they are the only YouTube channel on this list that I currently support via Patreon. Uh, granted, it's at only a dollar a month, but that's what I can afford. Bringing my own Patreon income down to, uh, I want to say... Uh, based on how many songs Unwoman released this month, uh, you uh, around eight dollars a month. So yeah, if you go to my Patreon, shameless plug, and you decide you want to give me some of your delicious money, uh, keep in mind that that thirteen dollars it says on there, or twelve something like that. I don't know. That's that's not very accurate because because about five of that is going to other creators. So yeah, Obscura Undead. Please go check them out. Please subscribe to their videos. They do done uh, with the two of them at a desk with a microphone between them, so it's got this kind of news anchory kind of vibe to it, which really reminds me of being a teenager in the mid '90s and watching MTV News. So that is wonderful. Um, I really like that uh, they're they're bringing some more of their own personality into this uh, early videos. Um, you know, there was, like, that bit of, like, nervousness to it at first when you first start doing videos, and you're just like, okay, how much do I want to put in, 
into this. And uh, and yeah, they're just they're really starting to blossom right now. So go check them out. You will not regret it. My my sole entry under LGBT slash politics because apparently everybody I subscribe to who would fit that description, or everybody else I do, um, has well over a thousand subscribers at this point. Uh, but, uh, she currently has only two, uh, visible videos, and this is a friend of mine. Ms. Willow Presents. M.S. Willow Presents. Willow, spell like it sounds. Presents, spell like it sounds. Uh, she is a maker of short films. In fact, she and I have been talking about doing a music video for an upcoming holiday single of mine. Um... I'm not sure where that's even going at this point. Uh, she, she's just started a new job today, so... Next on the list, we've got uh, BookTube and CraftTube. So I've got two of each, because most others are over a thousand, and I feel kind of bad about that. And I don't know why I feel bad about that. First on the list, at uh, under 200 subscribers, we've got Argyle Dinosaur. A-R-G-Y-L-E, Dinosaur, D-I-N-O-S-A-U-R. Um, they're another Michigan tuber. Uh, I think we're kind of in the area of personal friends right now, even though they live out in Grand Rapids and have yet to come visit me. And I'm sorry, I will take a train to many places in Michigan, but Grand Rapids is kind of the scary conservative side of the state, so I, I would rather not if I could get away with it. I put them under BookTube because that is, I don't know, that's a lot of what they what they make videos about. They also do a lot of, like, little um, life update, vloggy chat kind of things. Uh, they also do occasionally makeup kind of videos. I did mine the other day. I gave them a shout-out on my Get Ready With Me plus Unpopular Opinions video. Uh, they, they did one, like, pretty much just like it, only different opinions. And I just hit my teeth with a metal straw. Next on the list, under 800 subscribers, and I don't know why, because she is, she's fairly entertaining. Savvy Books, S-A-V-Y space books. Uh, I think she. Uh, she is an author. She's also a reader, so she does a lot of author and reader tag videos. Uh, she's also done a couple bullet journal, uh, plan with me kind of videos. And she's also the author of a series, and I think they've, uh, 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 I don't remember if she's got a separate channel for it. I know she's got a separate Facebook for it. Uh, one of the series that she, uh, that she does that she really likes to, uh, push is her Forever Home Friends, which is a series of books and plush animals and stories based on actual rescue dogs. I haven't heard about a rescue cat being featured in one of her videos, or one of her books and, uh, plush, um, sets, but... Who knows? Maybe one of these days. Uh, and she also has been doing a lot of anti-multi-level marketing videos lately because she sees them come up at craft and book fairs a lot. And apparently there's an MLM f for books of some sort. I don't know. I don't, I don't pay that close attention, but I do love watching people ranting against multi-level marketing slash pyramid schemes. At just in the area of under a thousand subscribers, we also have Lady of Feywood. Now, what did my original list say with all of its notes and stuff? She does a lot of arts and crafts videos of all kinds. Like, she'll do embroidery, she'll do beading, she'll do um, various, like, paint and glue kind of projects with, uh, with very thorough steps. So, when I say very thorough, yeah, they, they do get kind of long, but at least you're watching stuff happen rather than just watching some especially pale, androgynous boy thing who's actually an aging Nancy boy past his prime, just like ranting at the camera for whoever knows how long. She'll also occasionally do makeup videos. Uh, she recently visited New Zealand, and she's based in Australia, if I recall correctly. Then at Somewhere under 600 subscribers, we have Bubba's Melties. I initially started watching her videos uh, tuned in from uh, Mama Goth, who uh, I know Mama Goth means well, but some some of her some of her videos I've got such mixed feelings about. 
but she does seem rather genuine and sweet. So I went to go check out Bubba's Melties, and Bubba's Melties, uh, she does uh, the little wax melt things that you put in the uh, scented diffusers with the tea lights. And she'll do them in various shapes and all sorts and various scents. So she does a lot of those videos about those. Um, she also does a lot of other videos, like she'll do stuff about um, goth stuff or books or little life updates, little stuff. Uh, she's, uh, she's also uh, disabled, I believe, a chronic pain disorder. So yeah, she's done videos on, like, you know, like, spoon theory and all of that, like, and, uh, and now we move into vintage, and like I said, broadly, I, I I'm using bro vintage very broadly here, um, so obviously I was, uh, describing, what's it called? Somebody. Oh, yeah, uh, Miss Magic Girl TV. I was describing some of her um, aesthetic, I guess, in the video that she does as a kind of Rasputina-ish. So, obviously, I have a fun, and I was calling her so delightful. So, obviously, I have a fondness for, like, the, you know, that whole early 20th century kind of vibe, only a little, like, on the whole darker, like, you know, the whole dark cabaret thing. Obviously, that's very much a, a bit where I lean, especially with the whole bohemian stuff. Now, I haven't seen an update from, from them in a while. My guess is there might be some health issues going on. So, th this is probably, so, um, so yeah, the next one here, much like Lena Blackrose, I had to take a guess based on number of views. Uh, so they're definitely under a thousand. I would guess probably still under 500 subscribers. And uh, the next one here is like uh, they're the they're the ones on the list that have had the longest um, period since they've last updated or you know with a new video is Chickster's Nest. I have plugged them so much in some of my earlier videos, and I feel bad about not doing so lately. But again, I suspect there are some health issues. Chickster's Nest uh, is a uh, public access show uh, based in LA, and they do a live simulcast on YouTube. As best as I can tell, it is like a father and daughter, and I believe the mother is also involved, so showbiz family. I found them through April Hava Schenkman, who has probably a similar number of subscribers. And I discovered April Hava Schenkman on an episode of the, uh, the, the latest revival of The Gong Show, with Mike Myers somehow getting Uncanny Valley on everybody. And Kat, you're not being helpful. You are not being helpful. Chickster's Nest, if you enjoy The Muppet Show, which is probably the, the most recent example of such I can think of. Because uh, So if you enjoy The Muppet Show and you are familiar enough with the background for The Muppet Show, you know that Jim Henson was going for something that was uh, very much for the adults in the audience, but, with, but that was just goofy enough and silly enough that nobody would care if kids were watching, and he wanted to, uh, do, it was kind of a spoof on the variety shows that were very popular in the 70s, but he also, like, as The Muppet Show, it was set up to look very much like, you know, an old vaudeville theater. That was the, um, that was the whole thing, you know, The Muppet Theater was an old vaudeville theater that they were doing this variety show out of, and Chickster's Nest very much has a feel like that, uh, but, I want to say, think like 19, uh, like, like early chat shows, like the early, like, like think Carson, think, uh, think Steve Allen, he had an old chat show, uh, oh god, yeah, he did used to host The Tonight Show, <laughs> uh, so yeah, like, think, think like old, like, 50s, 60s Tonight Show kind of thing, think that. Uh, you know, with the whole variety show aspect as well, like, they'll, like, they'll throw in these little cat... Uh, um, occasionally they'll throw in vintage commercials for no apparent reason. Uh, just, the, you know, they found an old Alka-Seltzer commercial and they decided to put it on the show. So, if, if, 
if you enjoy this, you if you enjoy that kind of thing, you will love Chickster's Nest. And um, and I please hope that whatever health problems might be contributing to um, the the huge spaces between episodes, I hope this all becomes. I, I hope everybody gets better and is is well soon. Uh, if it is other reasons that are behind their delays between episodes, then, like, I don't know if it's financial or whatever, but please, please come back. Please, we need more. We need more. Um, also, under Broadly Vintage, I have Dame Darcy. She has a YouTube. If you were a 90s goth and enjoyed the Meatcake comic, like myself, or if you enjoyed... Um, Dame Darcy's uh, Turn of the Century, which I have. Oh, it's... Uh, it's on my shelf of DVDs, but it's just far enough out of my reach that I don't want to get it, and I didn't think to pull it out of the shelf like I did with the Morgan Daimler book. Yeah, Dame Darcy has a YouTube channel. Um, she mostly will update it with uh, little videos of things she's doing... Uh, like little clips from appearances she's made, um, interviews. Uh, she does have a recent interview on there. She has a recent-ish um, convention panel that she was on. Uh, she is on YouTube, and she's wonderful. And you, if you were unaware and you've loved her since the 90s, like some of us, uh, you need to go check her out. Just go, like, subscribe to her YouTube. Give her so much love. Uh, she's also... Oh, wait, no! She's another person. She's she's one of two people on this list that I donate to via Patreon. Um, and then with also under 800 subscribers, we have Sideshow Tink. Sideshow, spelled like it sounds, but all mashed together. Tink, T-I-N-K, as in like Tinkerbell. I'm not sure how she got that nickname. I don't remember if I've ever seen her mentioned so in a video. But... She is a uh, thrift shop flea market junkie, much like myself. Uh, she'll do little hauls from those. She'll give stories about her life. Uh, she's an old school, like first generation New York City punk. Uh, she She's one of the New Yorkers who does believe that punk started in New York. And I'm like, no, it started in Michigan. Like, I'm not even just talking the Stooges. I'm talking the first band to ever be described as punk rock was... Uh, the band of Latin American teenagers known as Question Mark and the Mysterians. First time ever described as, you know, by the music press as punk rock was Question Mark and the Mysterians. Latin Americans, all born and raised in Flint, Michigan. So, <laughs> punk is Midwestern. New York versus London people, you've got it all wrong. Punk is Midwestern. It is straight out of the Rust Belt. Cat, you're not helpful. He's still right here. I haven't moved him. He's up my ass, but I don't spank him. I don't... No, he's... He's just a little pain in the butt. I'll poke him. Very lightly. I'm not poking him hard. Thank... Hey, it works. Cat. Okay, I'm gonna try to read around him. So, under miscellaneous, we are coming to the end of the list. With under 400 subscribers... Uh, I would like to give a shout-out to Cindy K. Hole. She is a friend of Orpheus, um, formerly Orphea333. Uh, so that's how I discovered her, but her videos, uh, she does a lot of music, she does a lot of, uh, covers on an acoustic guitar, and she has a wonderful, delightful voice. She also does a number of videos about, um, anorexia recovery, and she does a lot of videos about her body modifications. Uh, I believe she's um, mainly talked about her piercings and the ones I'm remembering being most recent. So please go check her out. At the very least, you know, you'll get to hear some, uh, so, some pretty little acoustic guitar covers of various songs. Like, she just, like, runs, like, cross-genre. Um, under 100 subscribers, we have uh, Dark Jade. Uh, she's, she's delightful. She's a long-time subscriber of mine, uh, since before, I think, when I still had under a hundred, which is just, that, that just, that was last year. <laughs> uh, she does a lot of, you know, little life updates as a mom, and she does some stories and nerd geek, dork freak kind of topics. Uh, a lot of talk about Tim Burton, a lot of talk about vampire novels, especially the uh, the Poppy Z. Bright 
uh, books that she and I both love, and I believe we both met through, um, I just now living as Billy Martin out in uh, New Orleans. Yes, he has transitioned, and yes, he is a personal friend of mine who who credits me with, you know, lighting the fire under his ass to do so. So, um, so yeah. Um, Cat, seriously. Oh my gosh. He's, he's such a little pain in the butt right now. But he's so cute. I don't want to move him. But yeah. Dark Jade, like I said, under 100 subscribers. Um, she's just a mom who likes nerdy, dorky, gothic-y kind of stuff. Uh, uh, I believe she's based out in one of the Dakotas. She doesn't have quite as strong a, uh, an accent as somebody from Minnesota would, but you can hear a little bit of it there. Next on the list, with also under 100 subscribers, in fact, that's the next two, but the next one on the list is The Falling Dream, another longtime personal friend of mine. Cat, seriously. Um, they are non-binary, in transition to some extent or another. Like I said, longtime personal friend, but don't ask me for minute details. I also don't know what all they'd be cool with me saying. But they do a lot of videos uh, about uh, plant care and their house plants. And having the, in the indoor jungle of house plants is legit old school LGBT culture. Like, it is referenced in uh, Colin McInnes's, um book, Absolute Beginners. I love that novel, but uh, one of the characters is a relatively open lesbian, even though the whole thing is written and set in approximately 1959. <laughs> so yeah, she's a relatively open lesbian. She's a minor character, referred to as Big Jill, and her apartment is described as like being this virtual indoor jungle of houseplants. And in the film based on the novel, which does take its liberties, but we do see a very quick glimpse of Big Jill's apartment, which is festooned with houseplants. Also, like Derek Jarman's garden, like I've I've got the book of that. Uh, I it, it has been featured like both his outdoor plants and his indoor plants were featured in a couple of his films. <laughs> like this is this is legit a thing. Like plus like you know Strange Eons did that plant review video, and she's delightful. But um, so yeah, like. Yeah, I've got my own. Uh, I'm running out of space for them. Falling Dream, uh, they do. Uh, they also do some pet videos with uh, with their with their Snick and their uh, and their cat. Seen them do a couple book videos in the recent-ish past, but the most recent one was on the Orchid Thief, and they have an abundance of orchids and have done several videos about their orchid care and all of that. And last one on the list who I just discovered today through the Argyle Dinosaur, and that's how influential uh, Argyle is on me. Sherm Milty, S-H-E-R-M space M-I-L-T-Y. Uh, he does a video series of Fast Facts, which are updated every Friday. And it's done in this very character comedy way. In fact, like, at, I'm the 25th subscriber to this channel, and this is hilarious. Just watched their video on Pinocchio, fast facts about Pinocchio, and it is, it is some of the raunchiest th stuff you've seen on YouTube. I doubt they'll ever get monetized, but he, he just has, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Okay, my phone is yelling at me that I've been going on too long, so now is the time to end the video and hopefully get it all edited and everything with ample time and all of that. So, bats and kisses, sweethearts, and take care of yourselves and your cats. Um, cat, you are literally being the opposite of helpful right now. Yes, you. You are not helpful. No, you're not. You're not. Not. You're an annoying little noodle. Yes, you- Ah! Okay. Okay. I gotta go. Uh, I probably gotta feed him in like a minute or something. Alright. Take care. Bye-bye.